You're listening to The Mountain Gardener with local expert Ken Lane. Mountain gardening can be challenging, but with Ken's tips, tricks, and garden advice, you'll reap huge rewards. Now welcome back to The Mountain Gardener. And welcome to this week's edition of The Mountain Gardener. Your host, Ken Lane, uh, here every week talking about the landscapes of northern Arizona. And this is a classic spring. I told you like a month, month and a half ago, back in January and February. Remember how nice it was? We had shorts out, the top of the, the, the car was down, the windows were open, the fresh air was going. You thought, the spring is here and it's here to stay. And I told you, don't believe that's not how spring works in the mountains of Arizona. We get these false springs and then it goes back to there's snow flurries. And then we got these nice spring days and then it goes back to freezing nights and we got this nice day and it's just that's the way the mountains always are. So the average frost date for most of us is going to be in May sometime. That's the last frost of the year. So we got another month to go, month and a half, depending on your elevation. So that might be the end of April for you folks low uh, down in, in Sedona and Camp Verde, Cottonwood, those areas, uh, Cordes Junction, uh, Dewey Mayor, or it might be a little later, could be mid-May uh, for Prescott, Prescott Valley, uh, Iron Springs, uh, Flagstaff and Williams, you might be Memorial Day typically, but sometime in May. We're all sort of on the same sequence, but it varies by just a couple of weeks on either side of for Prescott, this area, we're talking Mother's Day or May 8th is our average frost date, 100 years of data. We've been tracking this, and it always lands on average about May 8th. Now, the funny thing with averages, some years uh, it, it's a little beforehand and some years a little after, but the average is somewhere in between May 8th. So last year we had last frost the end of April. It was two weeks. Spring was two weeks early. It seemed like that was going to happen this year, but this has actually been a very good week. This type of weather, these last two systems we've had, slows the plants down. And so your apricots are less likely to come out, bloom, and be frosted. So this is actually, I see this as a benefit. So it slows down the fruits, uh, the perennials coming up, so that they don't come up early and then get frosted back. So that this is this is way this is what we want in the mountains of Arizona. I did notice that the cherries have opened, the plums, ornamental plums especially, have opened. Uh, so the wild uh, prunus or, or cherry wild blooming ornamental cherries, those have actually this this moisture we've had said that's it, I'm going to bloom, and there we go. I noticed the forsythia, uh, this golden bush, has started to bloom. The Daphnes have started to bloom. So spring is here, but spring is here for the spring plants. The summer plants, you all are going to be worried here in, in about two weeks, calling the nursery going, hey, I think my grapes, they're dead. I'm sure of it. But they don't like spring. Uh, they like summer. They're waiting for the soil to get warmer. So it needs more of these sunny days before it gets there. So this kind of weather we've had with these couple storms that came through, that it slowed them down. Uh, your grapes, your desert willows, crepe myrtles, these guys have no interest whatsoever in spring. They love summer. They want it to be 100 degrees out if it can. If not, they'll settle for 90 and wind and dry. They love that. That's what they live for. They're summer plants. And so that's you really want to plant those things after Mother's Day. So before that, you want to plant spring blooming things. Now the pansies, the the ornamental kale and edible kale, the spinach, the lettuce, the snapdragons, they love everything about this type of weather. They're celebrating. They're going, oh, we were so worried it was going to get too hot for us and we'd have to stop blooming and just eat, you know, keel over and die. You know, uh, pansies and violas and those types of plants, if it gets above 85 degrees, they're tortured. They just, they, they often, you can't water those enough. They just flop over and turn brown and die. They don't like summer. They love everything about now. So you want to plant those type of things now. 
I think you're evergreen. If you're doing a privacy hedge, let's say that neighbor just built a a new garage or they just have a trash pit. You know, it's a contractor that brings home all of his junk, dumps it in the backyard. It's just this tumbled pile of garbage and you got to get you get to look at it from your bedroom. Oh joy. You want to block that off? You this is the time to screen with some evergreen plants or even aspens. Put put a few aspens and some Arizona cypress, junipers in there, arborvita. There's a whole series of plants that are good for screening. You really are better off planting those before the sun, before they flush new growth, new candle growth in spring. So you're better off planting now. This is a hard concept. I'm tr- I'm trying to give permission to you folks that are from the temperate climates, Southern California, Tucson, Palm Springs, you know, Phoenix, Scottsdale, those areas. You folks just can't believe. You can't see how anyone would want to be outside when it's below 75 degrees. I just can't plant now. It's, it's just too cold. Not so. In the higher mountains, the cool seasons, there, there's plants that actually prefer the cooler soils and cooler temperatures like we've had now. So our our planting crew... I put in the cattle prod to them. Going, get going! You're, they're already they're already over ten days out. They've got a ten day waiting period to get plants in the ground. They're planting fast and furious every day. They've been out planting, and it's the plants that prefer to be planted now. So it's the spruce and the pine and the fir and the the the, the evergreens up uprights. So the fruit trees are going in right now, and lots of the shrubs. So there's some big shrubs that, for some reason, this year. It's a privacy thing. It must be building. The building boom is is back, and so we haven't seen this um, interest. This, this so many customers coming in, going, "Oh, of this I've had this open lot, and I've been able to enjoy this view for years, and all of a sudden, construction's going on. I want to screen them out." Going, well, dang it, you should have screened them out five years ago. You wouldn't have to look at all the construction. But you know what? Let's start now. You know, the best time to plant a tree uh, ever, I mean, the absolute best time to plant a tree, 10 years ago. (laughs) So it has time to grow up and mature and root and become something. The next best time is right now. Just start. I I find so many folks start with the pretty stuff. You know, they, they put the drapes up. They bought a new refrigerator, new sofa. Now they're moving outside and they start with a pot in the back patio and they, they, they put a few flowers in, and when they really should invert that, they should start with the trees first because they take the longest to establish and get up to size and add value. Trees also are one of the few plants. They, when you do it once, it simply adds value to your property from that point on. Trees are one of those things, and large shrubs are those things that, that actually increase in value as they grow in size. Whereas if you remodel your bathroom or, or, or a kitchen or anything else, the, 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 the most value is right then. As soon as you get done, that's as much as going to be. It deteriorates or depreciates thereafter. Your landscape, especially the trees and the shrubs, gain value. Not so much with the flowers. You know, flowers, they're good for perennials even. They're good for... I don't know, two, three, four years, and then they start to get clumpy and too big, and you got to divide them. There's some work, or they're annuals. That is, they they live for a year and then they die out in the winter. They're just done, so you don't get any real value gain when you put flowering kind of things in roses. There's no real value gain in a rose garden. They're beautiful, but their time spans only about I don't know seven, eight years, and they just kind of lose their luster. So there, there's no real long-term value gain like you would with a an apple tree or a ponderosa pine or a spruce. Some of those spruces in your neighborhood, they're magnificent. I mean, some people will buy your house just because of that beautiful blue layered spruce that's growing up in the front yard. They're spectacular. They're stunning. Some people move to the mountains of Arizona just for the pine, the spruce, and the fir. They love the evergreens. They've come from the ocean and they've always gone on vacation up to the mountains. Now they're retiring. They're coming here and they just want that experience. They want to come and retire to the place they've been coming on vacation for all these years. There's great value in adding evergreen 
pine and spruce and fir, cedar, cypress, all those kind of guys in, in the yard. So start with those first, then move to the pretty flowery foo-foo stuff. Be right back with Lisa Waters Lane in the studio. You're listening to local garden expert Ken Lane, also known as the Mountain Gardener. Ken can be found throughout the week at Waters Garden Center in Prescott. Listen each week as he answers timely garden questions unique to mountain landscapes. Hi, Waters here with this week's Plant of the Week and our show-off for Scythias. A new standout for Scythia with very large, very bright solar yellow flowers that adorn the plant from head to toe. Relax! This showy spring shrub is beautiful and requires no pruning or cleanup. This show-off is just days away from bloom and limited, so don't wait until these for Scythia are all gone at just $21. Waters Garden Center, 1815 Iron Springs Road in Prescott. Where people who love show-off for Scythia love to shop. You're invited to Waters Garden Center's 56th Spring Open House. Last week's storm stalled the celebration, so we decided to keep on celebrating. We have even more spring plants to show off. New for 2018, drawings and more. Saturday's 930 class is titled Spring Trees and How to Grow Trees Better. All weekend, there's giveaways, access to local plant experts, and hot dogs on the grill. Join the fun at Waters' 56th Spring Open House all week long. You're listening to The Mountain Gardener with local expert Ken Lane. Mountain gardening can be challenging, but with Ken's tips, tricks, and garden advice, you'll reap huge rewards. Now welcome back to The Mountain Gardener. We are in the studio with Lisa Waters Lane. She comes each week with your garden questions. Just what are your neighbors talking about? You can learn so much. If if the question is right, I mean there are no stupid questions in gardening, <laughs> right? Is that uh, there's yeah. some that are better than others, I think but no, there might be, but we'll let that go. But you learn by <laughs> right by making mistakes, oh, sure, and then you correct from there, and hopefully mm-hmm. you're making mistakes in the right direction, never going backwards, truly, but maybe not going 100 percent forward every time. That's how you learn mm-hmm. stuff. So that's what this segment's all about. Okay. So how you doing this week? You staying dry? Uh, it's you know the weather in prescott or up in the mountains it's it's unpredictable you just never yeah. know yeah sure it's just part of it yeah. so i was explaining or at the beginning of the show uh we planned these spring open houses <laughs> 56 years we've been doing this you know this this week 1962 your father mm-hmm. had the first spring open house and it's been this way, dicey ever since. You just never know if it's <laughs> going to be glorious. Last year was glorious. Absolutely this week glorious. is is less. It's nice. I mean, yeah, you put a layer on. You just got to put right. an extra layer on, maybe a hat. Mm-hmm. It's fine. Right. I mean, you still can. We're tough up here, right? Yeah. That's, We're not a yeah. bunch of sissies. You, you preach it on. <laughs> preach on. Yeah. Hey, man. Seriously, though, if you want to see new plants, want to see some color, want to see what you can put in your yard... This is a great weekend to do it. We yeah. are full of lots of beautiful, beautiful things. And, you know, we've got so many greenhouses here. Mm-hmm. You can walk from greenhouse to greenhouse to greenhouse and never get wet. Right. I mean, we, we don't heat them necessarily, but it, mm-hmm. really the weather is nice. If you're out of the wind and the, and the wet, it's fine, really. That is true. So come talk to the, the growers. Talk, come talk to the breeders. Come talk to the – come talk to us. <laughs> <laughs> I'm afraid, you know, you invite all your friends to come right. to a party and, and you're afraid no one will show up. Yes. So all, the, all of our grower buddies, they're, they're here. Mm-hmm. And so, and they know they've, they've been emailing me all oh, yeah. weekend, texting going, Ken, you've seen the weather, right? And I said, <laughs> yeah, but your airline tickets booked already, right? <laughs> you're driving up here already, right? You're yeah. just, you know, so you're kind of committed. So you just go on with the party. There you go. So what do we get? What kind of questions? Any good questions this well, week? Well, we do. Shannon lives out in Chino Valley, and she wants to know how fig trees, pomegranates, and persimmons would do in this area. Fig trees, pomegranates, persimmons. Oh, my. They'll do great. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they'll, they'll do just fine. Now, grapes are in. Mm-hmm. Uh, blackberries are here. Raspberries are here. So blueberries are here. So those edibles are here. The pomegranates, they love summer. Mm -hmm. Figs, they love the heat. They love summer. 
And so I don't think we have those in yet. We right? do not. Yeah, I was going to say they'll show up usually in a month. Yep. They'll start, start showing up. They want the soil to be warm. Mm -hmm. If you were to plant those things right now, they'd be fine, but they would sit there until the soil temperature's up in that 60, 65 degree temperature, and then they'll just bud out and take off. Uh, grapes will be just before them. So they'll sometime in April, they start to leaf out, although... I think we're starting to see some leaves mm -hmm. on some of the grapes, mm -hmm. both table grapes and wine grapes. And the same thing for the bra the uh, uh, brambles. We're starting to see the leading edge of leaves showing up on the blackberries, raspberries, boysenberries, right. the berries. Blueberries have, have tons of buds. I mean, they're <laughs> the first to go yeah. or, to, or to open or to, to bloom. Of course, they love the spring season. They like mm -hmm. cooler weather. They love the, they're kind of, they announce that spring is here. So about the time the forsythia bloom, daffodils are blooming. That's when your blueberries are starting to go. So yes, they'll grow. No, we don't have them yet, but come <laughs> talk to us and we'll, we've got but grapes. We will. And, we will. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, definitely. So be patient. Yeah, Summer know, is coming. <laughs> it's, this is the first week of spring. It just started. <laughs> So Andy is new to the area. He lives up off the uh, Thumb Butte area. Okay, yeah. Neighbors said, watch out for scale. He wants to know, what is scale? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and what am I looking for? I was going to go into detail on that, the last, you know, kind of the nine things you need to do uh -huh. in the month of March. And scale is okay. one of those. Scale is bad. So it, it's a little tiny insect that crawls up the bark. The bark, if you catch it in the crawler stage, it looks like the bark is alive. It looks mm -hmm. like the bark is literally moving, like like alien life form. This The bark is crawling off of the tree. It can be that bad. They crawl up the bark, and they attach themselves to the new needles. They pierce the needle, like with a piercing mouth part, and they just suck the juice out till finally that needle will, will drop off and die. You can have four, five, six scale insects per needle times how many thousands of needles will, will this tree have this spring mm -hmm. and so if left unchecked you can they can literally leave the plant where there's no needles left and literally the tree will starve to death and that's how it dies from lack of photosynthesis it can't find the sugars from the sun can't can't do any kind of this tree stuff and it's the scale that does it and then they crawl down, crawl over to the next tree, and they just spread through the forest that way. Very easy to correct. Fertilize with water's all-purpose plant food right away, uh, the entire drip line, so you encourage more needle growth, and then treat with uh, a plant protector. It's a systemic bug killer. You mix it up in a watering can, pour it right at the base of the tree. Plant will absorb it, take it up, taint the sap, so when it, when it does actually pierce the needle, it will suck in the juice and some of this plant protector and go away. So that okay. that's what it is. It's actually an insect. Mm -hmm. They call it scale because when it pierces it, it, it uh, that needle, it forms a scale over top of it. So other insects like ladybugs and praying mantis and lace wings can't get to it. So once it scales over, there's really only one way to treat it, and that's with plant protector. Mm -hmm. One application lasts a year. No, that's great stuff. If you're seeing it, so they're say they're actively moving, or you see the yeah. egg sacs, can you do a spray? Is that you, you can effective yeah. too? Actually, that's the ideal way. So you spray it with an oil. Anything will kill a scale when it's in the crawler stage. It's only in the crawler stage for days, mm -hmm. so it's kind of hard to find. Kind of right. hard to catch it. But you spray it with a permethrin, an oil takes them right out. Uh, can you get them all with a spray? I don't know. There's so many thousands of them. No, it's ridiculous. No. I would still use the systemic, the plant protector, yeah. but I'm just wondering if you're seeing them actively moving. Yeah, it's spray them. Beneficial oh, spray. absolutely. Spray them from the trunk up through the, the major branches mm -hmm. as much as you can. Yeah. Okay. Our next question, speaking of dormant oil, is from Tom. He says, I heard you back in February talking oh. about dormant oil. Is it too late to spray it now? I love our, our, our avid listeners. Thank you, Tom, for listening and, and asking the question. That's a great question. You can spray dormant oils up to about 80 degrees, maybe 85. Once you get to the high 80s, it'll burn. It does more damage than good. It burns the new leaves, the foliage. So you are absolutely good to go really through April, mid-April at least, somewhere in there. So yes, you do want to spray dormant oil. You do want to get it on, clean the yard up, 
kills off the eggs and the insects. Do it, get your pruning done and then spray just like that. But we prune through the end of this month. So you've got some time. Go for it. Okay. That's all you have to say. Usually you oh. go on. <laughs> Can you, I mean, the answer was yes. Like went on and on <laughs> longer than I should have <laughs> spray dormant oil or we, we sell one here. It's called horticultural oil. Right. It's a little bit thinner. Mm -hmm. And so you're less prone to make a mistake. And we're all about get, getting that mistake factor in, 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 in the gardener's court. Mm -hmm. So it's easy to make a mistake, but there's some things you could, you can, there's more fudge factor with it. Sure. There's different techniques for planting that are, it's just easier or, or windows of planting that are more favorable. And that's the reason for the show is to get you where you're, you're in the zone where you're working with the environment, not against it. And so that's a great right. question coming from Tom. I, I, I love sure. it. Yeah. Okay. Ken and Lisa Lane and the mountain gardeners be right back. The Mountain Gardener, your source for garden advice right for the higher elevation of Arizona with local garden expert and the Mountain Gardener himself, Ken Lane. Listen in every week for Ken's tips, tricks, and techniques that are guaranteed to make a difference in your yard this season. In a new place, it's difficult to know who to trust, how to get help at the house, and which nursery will simply do what they say they'll do. At Waters Garden Center, we're here to help, in the landscape at least. Our team of plant ambassadors know your neighborhood, the plants that add color, increase privacy, and add fragrance and beauty. And we can show you exactly how to plant locally, or we have teams to do all the work for you. We are Ken and Lisa Lane, and we guarantee our plants will live up to every promise here at Waters Garden Center. You're listening to The Mountain Gardener with local expert Ken Lane. Mountain gardening can be challenging, but with Ken's tips, tricks, and garden advice, you'll reap huge rewards. Now, welcome back to The Mountain Gardener. This weekend is special. Now, we plan these things months in advance. We're bringing in growers or breeders or folks that create plants. The new introductions, they're here for spring. The early spring new plants, things you've never seen before. And you're not going to find them at a box store. You can only find these new introductions at your local nursery, the people with connections, the people that are that know uh, who, who are making new plants. So we've got new varieties of, of sedums, new varieties of, of autumn sage. There's a new purple. Oh, so pretty. It's not a dark, rich purple. It's a lighter, not lavender, though. It's hard to describe over the airwaves. Brand new. You're not going to find this anywhere else. It's only here at Waters Garden Center. And we brought it in for our spring open house. And the guy that developed that plant, he found it, bred it, took the cuttings, rooted them out, got them going. He's here all weekend. His name is Chris Shipley with Savano's Nursery down in Tucson. Pretty much he's a plant breeder that, that he creates plants. It's hard to describe. Did you know you can actually get a patent? on a plant, a new variety of plant, something unique that's not been seen before. I don't know how many dozens of patents he's got, but he's always saying, just got another one. There's a new plant. There's another. And so I just call him friend, but he's actually a, a plant genius. But uh, the, the Monrovia is one of the, they are the Cadillac grower uh, in, in the West, at least really much, pretty much in the, in the country. They're representative for the farm. He, I don't know how many acres he represents. His farm's 3,000 acres. He's here all weekend. You can just talk to him. Name's Jim Roop. And so over and over, the person that uh, helped me put our fertilizer together 15 years ago, uh, they're called Grow Well, Grow Well Company, Grow Well, something that they're, I just call them Grow Well out of uh, Buckeye. Uh, they helped me develop all of our soils, all the recipes. We've been tweaking these recipes for years, the manure we don't just have manure poop in a bag. We have a recipe that is how do we keep it deodorized? How do we keep it from getting yucky and gooey and gross and smelly? And it'd be worthy enough to go into the back of a Mercedes or a Lexus or a, or a Subaru and not stink the place up. That's just gross. So we've got a special recipe that they helped us put together. Our mulch, our potting soil, they helped us tweak that recipe till it was perfect. And now they blend these soils for us. Every time we need it, they're our blender. Well, Patty, she's here all weekend. And I, I'm pretty sure 
she's going to pot up stuff. She's giving out samples of soils, mainly our potting soil, which is where the real science and energy and effort is put into it. Uh, that's our growers mix. And so you could put a seed right directly into our water's potting soil. It would just seed like that. You can put a cutting in that. It would just root out like that. It's made, it's, it's a balance between moisture, keeping the moisture at the roots, but allowing air so the thing can root out and get in there. There's, that's a delicate balance, especially in a high altitude dry climate. Well, Patty's here all weekend explaining the soils, talking to folks, explaining how, what's best for a raised bed, how do you get your soils ready all weekend. And I think I've got her talked into, I hope I do now that I've got it live on the air. Uh, <laughs> Uh, she's going to pot up plants for folks. So the soil's free. She's going to do that for us. And she'll finally give me a credit at the end. But if you're buying a pot and you've got some plants, she'll pot them up for you. And then we can figure out how to get it to your house later. So that's spring open house is this weekend, all weekend, Saturday and Sunday. Um, it's just, if you want to hang out with really cool people that love fancy gloves and funky hats and like to talk garden terms, all weekend, that's gardeners are hanging out here at Waters Garden Center. It's kind of fun. Now, we plan these things. I didn't realize the weather would not be ideal. I knew there was a high risk. I mean, March could be absolutely glorious or a blizzard condition. I never know. But you got to plan these things because these folks have to plan their airline tickets and get travel arrangements. You got to book them and then take them and make the most out of whatever, whatever the weather gives you. You deal with that. But I've also found that true gardeners, they're coming out. It doesn't matter. They, they're they interested. They want to talk plants. So they come out anyway. It's the it's a borderline or amateur gardeners. They kind of go, eh, I'd rather go get a cup of coffee than go to an open house at the garden center. It's cold out. But the heaters are on in the greenhouse. It's pretty, you're, the weather's off of you. So it's not going to be breezy. So it's come, come on down and talk to Mike growers and gardeners and manufacturers and developers of soils and fertilizers. They're here all weekend, all Saturday and Sunday, probably by Sunday afternoon, they're heading back to, uh, heading back to airlines and just heading back. So they're probably here till just after lunch on Sunday. And then we'll, I'm forced to release them. So they go back home to wherever they live. So they're coming from all over the place. So that's just a special invite. Come down. We've got hot dogs on, on the grill for lunch. It's, uh, there's giveaways. There's special impromptu classes uh, on Saturday this 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 week. I'm I'm going to have them teach the class, and I didn't put a put an idea in their head. I just said here, share some garden info at 9:30 on Saturday that that maybe we haven't heard before, and I'm just going to release them and we'll capture this on film and let people see that later on our website, YouTube channels. It's just a good all weekend long spring open house. It's our 56th spring open house here at Waters Garden Center. The Mountain Gardener, your source for garden advice right for the higher elevation of Arizona with local garden expert and the Mountain Gardener himself, Ken Lane. Listen in every week for Ken's tips, tricks, and techniques that are guaranteed to make a difference in your yard this season. Growing up in Prescott, we knew spring was here when my grandmother's lilacs bloomed. I'm Lisa Waters Lane, and my grandma would be thrilled with the new Bloomerang Pink Perfume Lilacs at Waters Garden Center. New pink blooms fill the landscape with fragrance of grandma over and over again in the garden. Mine bloomed three times last year, making spring last well into fall, all for under $25. Lilacs like grandma used to grow, and better. Waters Garden Center, 1815 Iron Springs Road in Prescott. And we have the most special gal in gardening, at least in my world, back in the hot seat in the studio. And she just shares her opinions with all of us, so all of us can just hear it, listen in. <laughs> so we gave her this entire segment just for to get that uh, the feminine touch. I think there's some different ways, different gardening. Gardening is the most unique art form because it's so tactile, it's visual, it's fragrance it's touch it's feel it's it's not just visual like a portrait it's not just three-dimensional like a sculpture it's not it's it's much more than that and so i was dealing with some artists a couple here famous bronze uh like like famous bronze artist lives right here 
There's actually quite a number of them. You'd be shocked. <laughs> uh, they choose to live here because it's it's open territory. It's just mm-hmm. it's vistas. And he's a gardener. Imagine that. This is his therapy. He's in the studio too long. Mm-hmm. And so he hunts and then he gardens. He was showing me his chicken coops and garden <laughs> raised beds. Yeah. It was art form. I mean, it was bad. Yeah. beautiful. But that's, that's that angle, that perspective. Mm-hmm. So I think it's good to hear more than just Ken's perspective on uh, gardening Always. to bring Lisa in. <laughs> well, anyway, what do you got for us today? No, speaking of that, I was talking to a gal in the upper greenhouse, and we're like, we're just shooting the breeze, we're talking. And I said, well, what are you in for today? And she goes, well, I just read an article that said touching plants and being out in the garden reduces your chance of Alzheimer's. Oh, so really? I thought I'd better come out and touch some plants. Oh. Sure, that's great. She could have gone to the forest in her own yard, but well, I think she wanted some place yeah, beautiful yeah, to come you bet. to. But sure. I just thought, you know, that's really cool that, and I'm huge on that. I'm huge on it for kids um, and for older people. The people that are just stuck in their house maybe too much, getting out in your yard is terrific. I mean, for your for your body, for your soul, your spirituality, all of that. So, I love it when the office is released. So your dental office or, or they'll, you'll see a couple gals coming in and they're, they're just here for their therapy session. They call mm-hmm. it their therapy session. Just want to get down, decompress. Right. So we hear that quite a bit. They mm-hmm. come to the garden center. Of course, we've set this place. This garden center is made to be more like a botanical garden. We've mm-hmm. designed it that way. So you're not walking through mud. Things are spaced. They're actually shown off. Things are put together as companion plants. So you can, it's easier to shop them and compare them. Mm-hmm. So it has a a garden feel to it. Oh, and then only you can take a piece home with you if you want. Yeah. That's the goal. Right. And so that's that's a huge compliment, actually. Mm-hmm. Not mm-hmm. here to buy. Just read something and said, I want to go to Waters for Alzheimer care. I love <laughs> it. That's great. I just thought that was neat. But yeah, there's all kinds of reasons to come down here. But today, I thought we would talk about those spring blooming trees. Oh, perfect. They are just starting. I'm noticing the ornamental plums in my neighborhood, or yeah. our neighborhood, yeah. are starting to pop. Mm-hmm. And they're so pretty. Um, they just announced that, oh, spring is here kind of thing, even though it's rainy. <laughs> I think it's a rain that did it. I think it's a storm. Yeah. Last two, the moisture in the last mm-hmm. two storms, the humidity went up. Uh, it really hasn't been that frosty. Mm-hmm. The days are cool, but the nights are warm right. for them. Mm-hmm. So they're going, that's good enough. It's it's rain. That's good to go. Yeah. And so it starts. Yeah. And once it starts, it's just a roller coaster right down the hill. Mm-hmm. To, spring just arrives. Right. It's kind of exciting. Right. I can't wait. <laughs> So like I said, usually the first ones you see blooming are the ornamental plums. And those are trees that they shouldn't produce a fruit every once in a while. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> I think last year a lot of people got fruit so off warm. of them. So warm, yeah. Uh, but what a nice tree. Tough as nails, too, for as pretty as it is. It is tough. Um, usually has a pink, light pink blossom to it. There's um, the KV plum and the thundercloud plum. They're cousins of each other. Um, and just... Really pretty blossoms, and then they put on that nice kind of burgundy or purple leaf to them. Great if you have a lot of green in your yard, if you have nothing but green. <laughs> or blue. Let's or say blue. a bunch of oaks yeah. or something. Right. Just pine trees. It's yeah. a great one to contrast. It, it's nice to contrast that color with. Yeah. And they get, what would you say, 20 feet oh, tall? Oh, that's really optimistic. I'd say more 18. like 12 to 15 yeah. is pretty normal. It's a short vase-shaped tree. So with purple foliage. So it's mm-hmm. also called a purple leaf plum. Mm-hmm. Also the cousin of that, the native, are mm-hmm. starting to open up. There's a whole native. That's why purple leaf plums, the whole prunus family, does naturalize this so well. They just grow wild. Right. And animals don't eat them. So that the deer will roam through, the javelina. Mm-hmm. They don't. They don't have no care about that particular tree. Right. And it also comes in the, um, so like the sand cherry, which is more Correct. of a shrub form yeah. of it. Great one to throw into the yeah. landscape. Choke cherry is another mm-hmm. one. You got that one. So and they're all starting to show color here in the nurseries. Mm-hmm. We had the most beautiful, what is that, 10 or 15 gallon size purple leaf plum you've ever seen. The perfect form. Yeah. All for like a hundred, like a hundred bucks or something. Mm-hmm. I went, wow, that's a lot of tree for the money in my world. And that's like, <laughs> wow, that's pretty neat. Right, right. Definitely a pretty, pretty tree. Then we get into all the red buds. Now, when you start talking about red buds, there's probably, what, like 
12, 15 yeah, different yeah. varieties of red bud. I think the two most popular are the Oklahoma and the Eastern. Um, so red buds have that really dark pink, almost fuchsia colored blossom to them. And boy, do they stand out in the yard when they're blooming. Absolutely gorgeous. Um, but it also comes in, so red buds probably there again, get around 18, 20 Optimistic, I'd say yeah. 10 to 15. Short, it's a really short, probably the shortest of mm-hmm. the trees right. in, in the yard. Well, they also have, so the Avondale and the Western Red Bud are truly small trees. Yeah. They get about 12 feet. Yeah. So if you're looking for um, a beautiful, tough tree, but you don't have a lot of space, um, I would definitely recommend looking at those two. That's a fire-wise tree and a low-water xeriscape tree because it naturalizes of course the western red bud just grows wild right. in the rockies so it's mm-hmm. it's a true native for the high altitude avondale's a variation of that and and the trees naturalize just as well as the bushy shorter tree forms mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. red buds are a great way to go someone came in and said do you have any palo verde trees uh, i went no mm-hmm. that doesn't grow here but a similar form that the de- Palo Verde grows in the desert mm-hmm. would be red bud. I said, you yeah. should look at red bud. It's the same shape, same form. Mm-hmm. It just doesn't have that green bark. It's got more right. of a aspen, lighter gray colored bark. Mm-hmm. They also make one uh, called Ruby Falls, which is a really short, like five, six feet tall, but it's a pendulous. So the branches uh, bend down kind of um, umbrella like. Yeah, weeping. Um, and that one's gorgeous too. And that has more of a. That and the forest pansy have more of a purple leaf yeah. to them. So those are nice ones. Um, service berry. I love the service berry tree. I think it is way underutilized I agree. for here. Pretty white blossoms, gorgeous green leaves. It puts on a small fruit, kind of like a small cherry, cherry kind of type fruit. Yep. Uh, and beautiful fall color. I mean, it's one of those trees, um, it's kind of like the ornamental pear that gives you more than just one season uh, of color out there in your landscape. The pretty blossoms, white blossoms, nice green leaves, and then beautiful fall color. It actually has white flower. It's a native. Mm-hmm. It's truly a native uh, a tree here. So if you're into native plants, service berry is your tree. I would say a companion would be red bud. Mm-hmm. Uh, but service berry has white flowers. Beautiful, dark, dark green foliage. And then orange. I mean, just like this glowing fall color. Great tree, up to about 20 feet, something Mm -hmm. like that. And you'll just see them growing wild out out in the forest. And that's another one we also have in in a more of a shrub form as well. So tree form with a single trunk and then more of a shrubby one for those landscapes. Um, Cherries. There are, there again, there are so many different ornamental cherries, Kwanzaa, snow cherry, weeping cherries. I could go on and on. Double flowering pink cherries. Yeah. Um, absolutely beautiful out in the yard. And the thing I like about them too is their trunks. Uh, the color in the trunk is really cool. Very distinctive. The way mm-hmm. it's got that texture to the trunk. It's mm-hmm. a great plant for you. And the flower is more weeping. Right. So it's truly an ornamental. And if you kill a cherry, it'll be from overwatering. Yeah. So that's the only way you can kill them. It's not from going dry, it's from overwatering. And then also I'd put in that same realm, just their kind of companions, crab apples. Oh, yes. The brightest colored flowers are crab apples. Mm-hmm. So you can go down the lines. The way we merchandise all the trees, we go from small to tall here at Waters Garden Center. So it's the smallest, you know, your red buds going up to the cherries and crab apples up to the uh, purple leaf plums and up to the Bradford pears and up to the maples and cottonwoods and willows. And it keeps going. So <laughs> good time to plant trees uh, at, from Waters Garden Center. Thank you so much for sharing, Lisa. Be right back with more on the Mountain Gardeners. The Mountain Gardener, your source for garden advice right for the higher elevation of Arizona with local garden expert and the Mountain Gardener himself, Ken Lane. Listen in every week for Ken's tips, tricks, and techniques that are guaranteed to make a difference in your yard this season. Hi, Waters here with this week's Plant of the Week and our show-off for Scythias. A new standout for Scythia with very large, very bright solar yellow flowers that adorn the plant from head to toe. Relax! This showy spring shrub is beautiful and requires no pruning or cleanup. This show-off is just days away from bloom and limited, so don't wait until these for Scythia are all gone at just $21. Waters Garden Center, 1815 Iron Springs Road in Prescott. Where people who love show-off for Scythia love to shop. Now, there are a few things that 
I have on my personal list for my own personal gardens. This, these are our experimental gardens we have that we just introduce new plants or test plants out or for my own gardens at my own house. This There's a list that I go through and I try to finish off by the end of this month. I thought I would just share, not go into detail, but just share some of those ideas. Uh, and the first one you really have to get done by the end of this month is pruning. Pruning back your perennials, pruning back your fruit trees, pruning back your roses, pruning back, you want to prune back everything except the spring blooming things. So wait on lilac, wait till they're done blooming, wait on forsythia, wait till they're done blooming, wait on on flowering quince, wait till they're done blooming, then you cut them back. So they, they might be the end of April, but everything else, pretty much most everything in the yard, prune them back now, finish that up. Very important is fertilize everything in the landscape. Get that plant food on there and don't just use any fertilizer. Would you please, for the love of gardening, stop using that miracle Grow garbage? Now, I'll probably get a cease and desist order, but you know what? I feel strongly enough about that to where I'm tired of that garbage food, salt-based, coming into our marketplace and killing our plants and stopping blooming. They turn yellow. It's terrible. Stop! I stopped selling that stuff 10 years ago in my garden center because it was doing more damage than good. I know you folks in the Midwest live and die by miracle Grow because you've got eight foot of topsoil and it doesn't matter if you fertilize or not. But here in the Southwest, that is the worst stuff. You mix that stuff with our water and you've got death and decay and carnage in the garden. Okay, so someone is going to come in going, Can you? I've had great luck with this stuff. What are you talking about? I'm going, I don't care. The bulk of us should not be using that, that garbage. So stay away from that. Okay, now uh, my blood pressure is about doubled now. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to step back off the box. And I'm going to take a deep breath. You and I, the bulk of us, the smart gardeners, the ones that are really doing it right and working with the environment, not against the environment, we should be using organic foods that are granular based that you could spread on the ground. The water that we've had this week will come down, release it going through the rock, through the fabric, down to the roots and provide nutrients for your plants over a two, three, four month period. That is good plant food. You're not going to find that in a Scott's Turf Builder or an Ortho or miracle Grow. The mass merchants, the mass manufactured chemical fertilizers, they're not made for you and I. Those are made for the East Coast where the bulk of most humanity lives, maybe the West Coast. But they live on the coast from D.C. to Boston over to Chicago and then up and down the Western Seaboard. That's, those foods are made for there, and they work pretty good there. But where we've got very alkaline soil, very alkaline water, hardly any topsoil, no, I mean, wind and sun, they don't work very well. You're better off going organics. Plus, we're all drinking groundwater. So if it's, if it's chemical-based or oil-based type of stuff, it gets released very quickly, washes down the, the dry washes, and gets down into the water table. And then you and I get to enjoy it and drink it later. We're poisoning ourselves. We should use organic foods. And so I, cr- I feel so strongly about this that I created my own like 15 years ago. It's been so long I can't remember. It's called All-Purpose Plant Food. It's a 744 food. The main ingredient is cottonseed meal. So it'll smell kind of earthy. Okay, it is, it's organic. It smells earthy. Uh, that bothers some. But it, just spread it. It'll quickly dissipate. But fertilize by the end of this month. I would say that's critical Uh, That's one thing. Prevent the weeds. Put your weed and grass stoppers down. While you got that hand spreader out for the fertilizers, spread the weed and grass preventer. It keeps the weeds, the seed, from coming up through the rocks around your bushes. It doesn't affect your trees, your shrubs, or your ground covers, or your flowers. It doesn't affect a plant already rooted. It only keeps the seed. It affects the seed and keeps the taproot from coming out. It really stops the weeding need in your in your yard. I, I I despise weeding. That's like Adam and Eve. They gave us weeding. It's their fault. At the fall, they were kicked out of the gardens, and then weeds were introduced. Oh, I could strangle them both right now. 
But anyway, uh, you need to put those weed and grass preventers down to keep the weeds down. Once they come up, once the foxtail, the dandelions, the whorehounds are up, it's too late. You've got to physically pull them or spray them with a chemical to, to keep them at bay. So now's the time, especially with this moisture we've had. As soon as we reach 70 degrees, weeds are going to go crazy. Since you've done pruning, you got your fertilizing done, kill the bugs. There's eggs. The aphids are already coming out. Thrip will be here shortly. You need to spray. Just hose down the entire yard. I put in a hose-in sprayer, uh, all-season horticultural oil. It's a very fine oil put together by Bonide. They, they, you spray down the oil. It's, it's organic. It's as safe as you can get, and it's the least expensive of all the bug killers. But it hoses down and cleans up the entire yard. So all the eggs that are there or any bugs that are, are wintering over, they're killed off. Now more can fly in, but at least we're starting we're at least we're starting clean. We've got less less possible uh, uh, bugs. I would also say in that same vein, this pinion pine scale is horrific. If you have pinion pine, if you're in that chaparral zone where manzanitas, pinion pines, and oaks grow, you need to be really sensitive this year more than others that the pinion pine scale is early and there's more of it than years past. If you see uh, kind of a, a fine egg mass at the base of the tree or the main crotch, it kind of looks like, like cotton balls with little black dots. The scale of hatch, they've come down, laid more eggs. As soon as that pine starts to elongate, put new needles on, they will hatch, come up, and then suck that plant dry. And so you need to treat those pinion pines. I think all the, at least the important pines on your, on your yard, you can't treat the whole forest, but there's some that are so important. If you lose that, that pine tree, you, you lose value. You're just losing. You just can't replace that. It's been there for hundreds of years. You can't replace a big ponderosa or a big pinion pine. Treat those with plant protector. It's a special, special liquid. Mix it up in a five-gallon watering can or, or, or bucket. Sprinkle it around the base of the tree. The plant will absorb it, and it knocks out scale and bark beetle, both of those. So you do it once. It's good for the year. Super easy. You don't need a horticulturalist. You don't need an arborist. You can do this yourself. Come in. We'll help guide you through how much you need for that tree. But for goodness sake, get it on. Or, or your plant will suffer. Your trees will suffer. It's, it's, I've never seen anything like this. So I can't emphasize that enough. Do it by the end of this month as the plant is uptaking that sap is starting to grow. And before the scale or the bark beetle or the ips beetle comes after your, your pine trees mainly. Okay, So that, that's, that's when I've done all my trees. I fertilized them and I gave them the plant protector both. It may be overkill, but I've got nice trees. And I want to keep them that way. So I kind of think of the plant protector sort of like a like an antibiotic. It just keeps them healthy. If you have a lawn, uh, now's the time. You can green that thing up. Give them the give it that all purpose plant food. It will immediately green that thing up. You will see growth within a week or two. You'll be going, oh wow, that stuff works. Oh my goodness. But if you could fertilize it right now at the leading edge of spring. Those lawns will be thick and lush by April and May. You'll be out there enjoying playing with the kids, soccer and baseball, and have your, your pets will just be happier, and uh, the spotting will, will fill in by itself. Uh, if you do have a lot of spotting with dogs, just kind of a, a side note, I guess, if you've got a spot where, where the dogs have been doing their business and you've got some damage, for my own lawns, I've got a time lawn, I put soil activator down. It's, 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 it works in conjunction with your food. I'll put both down at the same time. Soil activator at its lowest common denominator is humic acid. If you were to take a huge compost pile and just let it compost down to its last element, it would be soil. It would be a humic acid. That's what soil activator is. It stimulates grass or plants, so it wants to root more thicken up, wants to, to become more drought hardy. And so if I've got a lot of pressure on it, kids are playing on it like crazy or dogs are on it all the time, soil activator and the all-purpose food, that 744 food, oh, it works so spectacularly. 
Uh, that I would get that on right away. So that's that's something I'd look at. Okay, what else? Going down my list. Oh, get the flower beds ready. Get the vegetable beds ready. It's time to prep that soil. As soon as you get the soil ready, you can start planting. We've got the plants in right now for the early spring vegetables and flowers. That's the list. That's how I go down the list for uh, at my own gardens here or here or the ones here at Waters Garden Center. If you need more info, come see us. Be right back with more. The Mountain Gardener, your source for garden advice right for the higher elevation of Arizona with local garden experts and the Mountain Gardener himself, Ken Lane. Listen in every week for Ken's tips, tricks, and techniques that are guaranteed to make a difference in your yard this season. Let's talk poop. Hey, I'm Tommy at Waters Garden Center. Ken and Lisa are out right now, so I snuck in to remind you that it's time to add some manure to your garden. It's been a wet winter, and your soil is, well, pooped. Waters Barnyard Manure adds nutrients to get your garden growing. It's organic and orderless, so we really can say our poop don't stink. Buy six bags or more. They're only $5.99. Now that's a load of crap. Tommy, what's going on? Oh, poop, gotta go. Natural, safe, odorless, and organic at Waters Garden Center. So spring is here. I, I know we get some weather patterns and stuff. I didn't say the frost was done, but the spring plants, they don't care. When it's spring, this spring this week, they're happy. They're going to go into bloom, and there's nothing you can do about it. They're going to start. Your daffodils are going to just elongate. They'll be in bloom here in days. Iris, I notice, are starting to elongate. They're starting to grow. They're loving this weather. The moisture kind of set them off. So you notice the buds on your pines and your fir and your spruce they're starting to get quite large they loved this weather they love the moisture if you put your fertilizers down before this moisture came boy they were really happy oh my goodness your timing could not have been better Uh, so that that's a good thing every saturday we host a class, and we, we it's seasonally correct. So um, we, we've, this weekend we just had, I just gave a f- oh, basically open mic day to, to, to the growers. They could talk about whatever they wanted because I always learn something. You notice when you hang out with smart people, you just get smarter yourself. They call it osmosis, but I think it's more purposeful than that. You're surrounding yourself in an environment where you just absorb more inf- more tidbits And by the time you get some experience and some expertise and a few seasons under your belt, you just become smarter. Uh, So I thought, well, let's just see what they got. And it's, they got it. It's, it's fun. Next weekend, uh, it it gets even better. So next weekend, I've got uh, the spring, (laughs) spring. can't say it. Trees of spring. So easy. Trees of spring. So all the tree uh, bloomers of spring, we're going to feature those. And exactly how do you plant to get the most out of your trees? Trees of spring. Yeah, we'll probably cover aspens because it's the number one seller. I'm sure we got to cover maples. If I don't bring a maple out, it's a number. Again, it's one of the top sellers. So I got to cover those, but I'm going into so much more. We're famous for our crab apples and our red buds and our flowering cherries and our Bradford pears and the fruit trees. And we're just so, we grow so many varieties that uh, the folks in the deserts would just dream of this. We can actually grow them. We grow so many that the, the zone here, the, the, the elevation allows us to grow all of the cold hardy seasons and a lot of the desert ones that our Midwestern customers are just jealous. They're so, they get giddy over all the options that they have. We'll go over all of those and how to plant them, how to deal with the wind, how to fertilize them, how to care for them. Then, okay, that's the 24th of March, 930. The last class in March, March 31st, Lisa and the crew are going to teach this. It's advanced container gardening. So if you want to know how to put together beautiful pots that just stay that way, she's going to go over her three-step program and how to do it. The first 12 students that come, uh, they with a thirty-five dollar bill. This is a make and take, so you'll get way more value than thirty-five bucks. We're doing it pretty much at cost. You got a pot, the soils, the plants. So you get to pick, and Lisa and her team will be there to interact and show you how they would tweak that to make it even more beautiful. Bring your own pot. I'm sure you could. They'd help you with that. And then it's free just to watch. So if you just want to f- 
see what's being said and what's going on and see all the examples. And then you take that home with you. So it's free to watch, 35 bucks to take. You might even call ahead of time. That's March 31st. We've got several reservations where they knew there was limited space. We just don't have enough table space. And you got to have this thing more organized. Can't just be a free for all if you're, it's a make and take. But that's the 31st. And then a biggie, April 7th, drip irrigation. How do you design them? How do you install them? How do you add to them? How do you how do you maintain them? So irrigation, you've got to maintain like a car. You've got to seasonally go out and tune it up. We're going over all, all that detailed information and, and more. Uh, that's the class schedule coming up. Come out this weekend, all weekend. It's Waters 56th Spring Open House. We'd love to see you here. Lisa and I will be camping out all weekend here at Waters Garden Center. The Mountain Gardener, your source for garden advice right for the higher elevation of Arizona with local garden expert and the Mountain Gardener himself, Ken Lane. Listen in every week for Ken's tips, tricks, and techniques that are guaranteed to make a difference in your yard this season. High Waters with our Plants of the Week and our Flowering Easter Baskets. The garden center is stocked full of these big, bold flowers grown to perfection. We've grown 200 baskets that mesh, intertwine, and spill with colors. They make a perfect gift for neighbors, moms, pastors, or a good friend. Don't forget to treat yourself to spring flowers as well. These locally grown baskets are only available until Easter Sunday and all for under 20 bucks. Waters Garden Center in Prescott. Color your Easter with flowers. You're invited to Waters Garden Center's 56th Spring Open House. Last week's storm stalled the celebration, so we decided to keep on celebrating. We have even more spring plants to show off. New for 2018, drawings and more. Saturday's 9.30 class is titled Spring Trees and How to Grow Trees Better. All weekend, there's giveaways, access to local plant experts, and hot dogs on the grill. Join the fun at Waters' 56th Spring Open House all week long. You've been listening to local garden expert Ken Lane, the owner of Waters Garden Center in Prescott. Join him each week as he answers timely garden questions unique to the area. He can be found throughout the week at Waters Garden Center located in Prescott at 1815 Iron Springs Road. Thanks for tuning in to The Mountain Gardener.